Hello, my soccer universe. Uh, well, the collector in me, and you know, I came through as a perfectionist. I had all the teams arranged how I project them to finish on there, and then I realized, oof, I don't want to really necessarily want to live at Liverpool or Chelsea, which are then the only two options that are left at the moment if I put all the teams up there. Fortunately, I have Ajax, so yeah, but it also means I, a, I need to add in a few teams that are doing well at the moment, namely Villa and Everton. And it also means I need to double up at least on the cities, the Spurs, the United and the um, Arsenals here that I'm, uh, you know, not so caught <laughs> with, cra with crazy occurrences. Well, anyway. It was another crazy round uh, and again all the big teams played on Saturday so on the front end we'll talk about a lot of big stuff and I think the big one was the derby between Everton and Liverpool and boy did it deliver but it did not have you know not always the most positive scorelines and I think Liverpool fans uh, will not remember that one fondly for the simple reason that I think the referee I don't want to say he did, he was against Liverpool, but there were refereeing decisions in there that I still do not get. Uh, it started actually quite well for Liverpool, who came out to swallow Everton, and after Roberts assist, Mane slams it home. Three minutes played, and I think at that point it was already a second chance. And Liverpool very early on having the better of the game, and already in the ninth minute, then a big call uh, by it, by the refs where. Um, after a free kick, I think it was a corner kick, suddenly um, uh, Van Dijk storms forward, Simi going to goal and Pickford comes out with a challenge, uh, clumsy as hell, mows down uh, Van Dijk and my thought is, yeah, that's a, yeah, uh, that's a red card and that's a penalty. Turns out Van Dijk was marginally offside and already that offside to me was debatable but I could maybe see it. But that Pickford got away with nothing. I understand you don't need to give a penalty if it's offside. But this was a reckless challenge that should have been uh, at least a yellow. But I think this was a red card foul. If you, even if the play has ended, go in with such uh, clumsiness, it just doesn't seem right to me that there was nothing given. And uh, the commentators on the German TV kind of said, yeah, because there was no penalty, it, 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 it was offset as no penalty and a uh, red card. I'm sorry, this challenge was reckless. At, at the bare bones, at least, at the very least, you have to give a yellow card there. I think it was a red card for Pickford right there. And this was the first uh, where the game kind of turned because up until then it was all Liverpool. Van Dijk goes out, is injured with uh, ACL injury, probably out for the season. Tough guy, that, that is, he actually walked off, which uh, that was um, surprising, but devastating news for Liverpool. And Joe Gomez comes in and they needed to find themselves. And that's where Everton hit them. And after uh, James Rodriguez corner, Kane, uh, Keane, I'm so messed up with this Moise Kane. Keen head has it in Adrian. Yeah, it, it was hard from short range. Alison probably would have saved it, but I don't want to pull it on Adrian. And it is 1 1. Uh, Mane misses another sitter late in the first half. So, yeah, could have uh, probably gone Liverpool's way. The second half kind of was boring uh, until. Um, Yerimina clears, uh, uh, I think it was Firmino, ball in, clears it right to the foot of Salah, who then slams it home. 2-1 Liverpool, and I thought that's it. But this Everton team has quite some resilience in them, and they come back. Uh, Dinier, Cross, and Calvert-Lewin heads it in to make it 2-2, and at that point, yeah, I thought still that Liverpool would get the win, and they actually got the winner through Henderson. But in the build-up, Mane was fractionally offside. And this is now this new handball rule that if the ball hits you here, it's not a handball. But that also means, uh, starting here, and you know, this shirt is a rather wide shirt. So my goal scoring part would start here. Meaning also, if this, the offside line is not here, but here now. Give me a break. This is... 
they're going back with, with, with the offside rule. If you look at it, draw one line, I could not tell if it's onside or offside. The whole line drawing to me was an absolute disaster. And I, th I thought that getting rid of how, how the lines will be put, honestly, really honestly, it was so random to put these lines. You cannot tell me that this was an offside. You really cannot tell me that this was an offside. Um, and again, I, it's not that I, yes, I have sympathies for Liverpool, for Liverpool, I don't deny that, but I ac actually went to this game with an open mind because I'm also impressed by Everton and I, I, I actually would like to see Everton do well. So I'm, it just, this offside law needs, there needs to be a change there. This cannot be this fractional moral margin of sides where the naked eye does not really, really, really see it. And so Liverpool is denied a winner and they lose Van Dijk and we uh, will have definitely, this game will definitely have ramifications for the rest of the season. Um, Everton, definitely the moral winner uh, there. Then we have Chelsea Southampton. Uh, Chelsea, a great team going forward on the back line. It's hor hor horrible. Uh, Werner scores the first two, two goals um, uh, after assist from Chilwell. I think a sack thing, well, he really balances it ni nicely to make it 2 0. But, you know, if you lose the ball in midfield like Havertz does it, and then the ball comes to Danny Ings, who can round Kepa. Hey, Kepa was both playing because, yes, we bought a reserve, we, we bought a replacement goalkeeper, but of course he's injured. I wouldn't have it any other way in Chelsea. Ings uh, gets, gets that one. Then the second goal by Adams. Yeah, uh, the Chelsea fans. Uh, Kepa twice has the, has the uh, chance to clear. I think Zuma had a had, had chance to clear. That should never go in. It's 2-2, two, two, but Havertz, with his first first goal, kind of makes up uh, for... I think the first goal goes on him. Uh, he has to go in there a little bit more decisively, or at least try to find back to win the ball. He makes it 3-2, and then it's stoppage time. Um, Westergaard, after Theo Walcott assist, uh, gets the equalizer 3-3. Three, three. Again, points drop for Chelsea. Going forward, Chelsea is great. They need some defense. They definitely will need some defense. Not much I can say about City against Arsenal. A, I didn't watch it. B, from what I hear, it was boring as hell because Manchester City just contained Arsenal, got the goal. Uh, the big news is that uh, Aguero seemingly is back. Let's see when he will be full fit fitness, but that would be definitely a boost for Manchester City. But yeah, Guardiola against Arteta ends with a 1-0 win for City. And not more said, yeah, David Luiz almost uh, produced an own goal. Uh, similarly, Newcastle was too bad to really give United a uh, challenge. Yes, they took the lead through a shot uh, on goal very early, early, early on. Then uh, Bruno Fernandes had a goal to disallow, but Harry Maguire a little bit later gets a goal. Maybe this will sell, sell, sell it down. Then uh, Bruno Fernandes even misses a penalty. It's still not odd enough because he himself, then very late on, United roll, rolls over, scores three more, Fernandes in the 86th, Van Bissak in the 90th, and then even Rashford gets uh, one as well. So, easy 4-1 win for United there. Uh, Sheffield United, Fulham 1-1, one, one, not, not much I can tell, same thing. Uh, Brighton was better at Crystal Palace, but get a late e equalizer, and also man sent off. I was all geared up for Spurs against West Ham, I finished now all or nothing. Yeah, interesting, but not more. But I was watching for Lusk and the boy was uh, scared. After 16 minutes, Spurs were up 3-0 and looked irresistible. Uh, Kane and Son, that's hard to stop. Uh, Son gets already in the first minute after a nice long ball for, uh, from Kane. The first goal, then uh, uh, Son returns the favor to Kane in the eighth minute. And then away along with a great uh, cross. 3-0. I watched for about 10 minutes more um, actually with my older daughter and then we decided the game is kind of boring now. I It really seemed like a Spurs is going to play this home. Yeah, uh, that's my bad because in the last 10 minutes Spurs collapsed. Uh, kind of ironic when Bale came on to make his comeback for uh, for Spurs. He actually had a chance to put the game, game, game away when, when it was 3-2. It was 3-2 within three minutes. First Balbuena gets one back and then an own goal from Davidson Sanchez and gets gets it back for uh, West Ham and then Lanzini with a wonderful shot in the 94th equalizes. 
If you're Mourinho, you gotta be fuming, but on then that's football. I think Spurs look like the real deal if they can get it a little bit uh, better together to close games out. Uh, but going forward, I'm actually afraid of Thursday evening, I have to say. Um, but hey, if they start giving up goals like that, maybe there's a chance for Lask as well. But I'm honestly, I'm a little bit afraid of Spurs at, at the moment. Son and Kane seem unstoppable. And then you have Bale. Woo -hoo -hoo. Let's, let's see how this is going. Um, and then Aston Villa continues their great run. There are only two teams with four wins out of four. And that's Aston Villa and Milan. Aston Villa, I think since the 30s, they uh, start with four wins out of the four. The goal, of course, comes very late. Uh, wasn't even good where Aston Villa mostly defended, but they are now start defensively. And I have to say, Aston Villa jersey. I need to look into that one. Uh, West Brom is the first nil nil of the season against Burnley, and Wolves get a win against Leeds United. Uh, I don't want to say surprising. I didn't see much. I don't want to say the result itself is surprising, but I would have. Uh, I would have expected it of Leeds to at least score. Now, uh, looking at that, in the table, Everton and Villa stay on top. Of course, Villa is not first because they have a game uh, less to be played. But yeah, uh, pretty, pretty impressive stuff. Liverpool moves up again a little bit uh, at the expense of Leicester and Arsenal. And the Wolves makes a huge jump, jump forward. But I have to say, it looks... You know, you can clearly see there, there is the top teams with Everton, Villa, and I think I want to put Liverpool, uh, maybe until Wolves, Spurs kind of uh, make it there. Then there's a broad midfield and suddenly it breaks off. I think at the earliest start with Brighton, but less with Wales from the last four really look like uh, those are the ones that will kind of fight the relegation battle, I have to say. Um, Next round, I think it starts with an interesting one with Villa against Leeds United. I'm really interested in that one. Uh, West Ham City. West Ham is a, is a sleeper team. I, I don't know really what to think of them. Uh, United Chelsea is, of course, a big name game. I'm not so excited about that one, to be honest, but maybe, hey. I have to have, have to see how, how the schedule works out. Um, Arsenal Leicester is also kind of an interesting one there as well and again Monday games I hate them which means that the review will come again on uh, Tuesday morning. Briefly the Netherlands, uh, the Rotterdam derby ended 1-1, uh, that is a surprising result. Um, I unfortunately I didn't see, I only saw high, highlights of one one game. Ajax had no problem with Herrenveen. Uh, I mean, it was already 3 0 at the half with Tadish scoring twice, one a penalty. Kudus gets one. Uh, the, uh, Herrenveen puts one back, but then David Klassen, who makes his Ajax come, come back, makes it 4 1 and then Anthony 5 1. So, pretty impressive stuff from Ajax there. And then Mario Götze, remember him? He plays now for PSV, gets the first goal uh, for PSV uh, in the ninth minute. Gakpo at, at, at another one, Zwolle missed the penalty, so Marlon can make it 3-0. Uh, and yeah, PSV now is on top of the league. Um, don't have a PSV jersey yet, just saying it as that. PSV Ajax seem to be the class of the of the league. I don't know, uh, Feyenoord with, with the wind could cool, stay, stay up there. Ajax heavily, heavily favored to uh, make it. To, to, to become the champions at the moment. And if you look at the next round here, uh, yeah, we have some interesting uh, stuff. Venlo Ajax, let's see. Uh, yeah, interesting. Feyenoord should get should get an easy win at Avalvac. Uh, and PSV plays at Vitesse. I think that's an uh, interesting game. Uh, we have to see when Arjen Rom comes back. So that was my review. Thoughts on my thoughts? Please drop below. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing and clicking the little bell icon so that you get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. With that, have a wonderful day. Bye.